Hi, Ben Scarrett here. I'm here today with Captain and today in this free training video we're going to be demonstrating and talking about how to get your horse better to be caught and solve those catching problems. Captain is a horse that the RDA own, the Riding for the Disabled, and he has had a lot of difficulty being caught um, for a long time now and they asked me if I could use him for one of these training videos so I said I would. So we're going to be working with Captain today and I'm going to use him as an observation for your learning um, to take him through the process of teaching him to be better to be caught. So there's usually around three different reasons why horses are hard to be caught. The first reason I find that makes a horse difficult to catch is that they don't like being approached. You know, they don't like the way that people approach them. A lot of horses, um, when they see people coming, because the people are so direct line and they're so adamant at trying to catch the horse, it's the last thing that a horse wants to, is to be caught. You know, you've got to look at it from the prey animal perspective. You know, a horse is a prey animal. The last thing they want is to be caught by the predator. Okay, so we have to kind of look at it and put, and put ourselves in the horse's shoes. The other thing too is a lot of people, when they approach their horse, they 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 go into the horse's personal space without even asking permission. So they just burst into the horse's personal space bubble without even asking permission if they, you know, if they could come in and, and, and allow the horse to allow them in. So a lot of times what happens is that the horse gets offended by the way that people are being rude and not, not asking for permission to go into their personal space. So one of the things that we can do to help combat a horse that doesn't like being approached is to be more observant of the horse's personal space thresholds. Okay? You can call it a personal space threshold or a flight threshold. See, when a horse is scared, they know that they need to keep the safe distance away from whatever they're scared of. Okay? So if you've watched, seen a documentary before, you would have probably seen in some documentaries uh, lions will be sitting down and then you know, 15, 20, 30 yards away, or 50 yards away, there'll be a zebra sitting there eating grass. And the zebra knows, as long as it keeps that safe distance, that uh, it'll be safe and the lion won't be able to attack it. Okay, so horses are prey animals, they're not a lot different to zebras, they're just a little more domesticated, and they still know to keep that safe distance, to keep that flight threshold, you know, so that they, and that, that personal space threshold, they know that when the lion penetrates that, that they need to move away in order to keep that safe distance. So a lot of times the horses that don't like being approached, uh, when you approach them, they'll trot off or they'll walk away when you get, when you penetrate that personal space bubble. It's like an imaginary bubble around, around the horse. And one way I also used to explain this is if you were to go over to China and talk to the people in China, because there's such a higher population density, people in China talk to each other a lot closer. And so a lot of times people from countries like Australia and America will be a little bit offended by the fact that the Chinese people come in really close and talk to them really close. It's like they're invading the, that person's personal space, okay, and invading their bubble. So when horses have trouble being approached, we need to be conscious of their personal space and don't intrude and be very polite and use approach and retreat to, to get closer to them. Um, the other thing too is to not be so direct. So I know that the next thing that causes horses to be difficult to catch is the horses that don't like what happens to them after they're being caught. Okay, so a lot of horses, they really dislike what happens to them after they're being caught. And if you think about it, a lot of horses, when they get caught, you know, they know they're going to get taken to the, to the barn, they're going to get saddled up, and maybe they're going to get a push to do things that they don't want to do. You know, they might be being forced to do things that they don't feel safe about or confident about or they just don't like doing because of the way the person is treating them. So that's another thing we have to look at. We have to look at what are we doing to make the horse not want to be with us, okay, not want to be around us, okay? And the third thing that I find that makes horses hard to catch is that some horses are not in the right frame of mind to be caught when you approach them. So it might just be a windy day or a, um, just an off day and that horse feels like on that day that it doesn't want to be caught because it just doesn't feel it like it's in the right frame of mind. So in those situations we have to do what we can to get the horse 
in the right frame of mind to want to be caught. Okay, we have to set it up in such a way and play a game with a horse to get the horse to want to be caught, okay, or to want to catch us. So today I'm going to be demonstrating with Captain um, a little game of get him, getting him to try and catch me rather than me trying to catch him. So I like horses to catch me rather than me trying to catch the horse. Okay, so I'm going to show you some strategies here that you can play with in a round pen to get your horse to want to catch you rather than you having to always go out and chase him and catch him. Um, and again here I'm in this specific environment because um, you've got to look at the horse that's bigger and faster than you um, and you don't want to have to do a lot of running. You know, horses will win hands down in a big paddock so what we want to see is that if you get into a smaller environment you're able to let the horse do the running okay and you, you're not going to end up being puffed and the horse feels like he can he can win the game okay so we don't want the horse to think that it's too easy to, to escape from those humans we want them to realize that, that the smartest thing for them to do is to, to come towards the humans because then we go away we take the pressure off okay so I'm going to turn Captain loose here and um, we'll see what he does and we'll go through the whole procedure of getting him to try and catch me. So I'm going to come up, take the halter off. And I'm going to see what Captain does. Captain might prove me wrong today and might be happy to be caught. So I'm just going to walk away like this and if Captain walks away then what I'm going to do is when he, if he's turning and and he's facing the other way and I get to where I can s approach him and I can see no eyes then I'm going to put pressure on him okay so I might just throw that lead rope coil it up and throw it at his hind quarter so when he's giving me one eye so now he's giving me one eye I'll put a little bit of pressure on him okay so I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on him Okay, so as long as he's giving me one eye, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on him. So I might tap my side, I might throw the rope out, angle it towards his hip, and I'm angling my body towards his hip a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to ask him to move around a little bit and realize how uncomfortable it is to be out there. And every now and again what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back and invite him to come in. Okay, so I'm going to, here I might step back, spiral out a little bit towards the outside. If he come and, comes and faces me, then what I'm going to do is walk away. Okay, so I'll walk away a little bit, let him turn and face me. And if he doesn't keep coming in, I'm going to just allow him to watch me there a little bit. And what I might do then is step out here, come in, towards his hind quarters. If I can get to where I've got no eyes again, okay, then I might put a little bit of pressure. If he walks away, I'll put a little bit of pressure on him. So he's giving me one eye, just a little bit of pressure. Angle myself towards his hip. And every now and again I might step back, spiral out, he comes and faces me and then I'll leave him alone. Okay, and I'll walk away. So once Captain looks at me, I'm going to walk away and then I'm going to come out here and spiral back in and see if I can get to where I've got no eyes again. If I can get to where I've got no eyes, okay, and he doesn't turn and face me, then I'm going to put a bit of pressure on him there. Okay? So every time he gives me no eyes, I'm going to put pressure on him. So if he's giving me one eye, right now he's giving me one eye, I'm just going to tap my leg. Okay? Angle myself towards his hip. Tap my leg. Just put a little bit of pressure on him. Not a lot of pressure, just a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to pick a spot and start spiraling out. So I'll spiral out a little bit, maybe bring my hand, if he turns the other way I can put pressure on him again. So remember one eye, a little bit of pressure, no eyes, a lot of pressure, 
two eyes, I'm going to walk away. Tap my leg. I'm going to pick a spot again. Spiral out. If he looks at me, I'll walk away. Okay, walk out in a big circle. I'm going to come out around as far out as I can, just in a relaxed manner, and see if I can't get him to turn the face. If he walks away, put pressure on him again. Come back to the center. Ah, there we go. He looked in a little earlier that time. He walks away, tap my leg again. Tap my leg again. Put a little bit of pressure on him. Try and pick a spot. Walk out. Just walk away again, put a little bit of pressure on him. So I give him this opportunity to come towards me. And as long as he walks towards me, gives me two eyes, I'll walk away from him. Okay? So I'm going to play this little game and see if he can't catch me. See if I can't get him to catch me. Time he runs away, I'll just put a little bit of pressure on him again. There we go. So after a while, the horse should start getting to where he thinks that he can start training his human to not put pressure on him. A little bit of pressure. And sometimes I'll keep them out there for a little while, let them trot around long enough before they, to, so that they start thinking about you know, what have I got to do to maybe stop trotting out here? So he didn't give me two eyes, so I asked him to keep going. He just gave me one eye. So I want to create incentive for him to want to catch me by moving him around the outside there. Every now and again, maybe step back. Step back again, spiral out. We play this little game of can he catch me instead of me trying to catch him. One eye, two eyes. So whenever he gives me two eyes, I walk away. Step back. If you give me two eyes. Angle that pressure towards his hip. Step back. Swap my rope in my other side, in my other hand.
Okay, every now and again I'll give him the opportunity to come in, I'll step back, spiral out. Step back, and then walk away. There we go. It's a bit of a change. And I'll walk out right along here, around the outside. And that's what I want, I want him to catch me. I want my horse to catch me. So I'll step out along around the outside here and if I can get to where I've got no eyes again, then I'll put pressure on him. He walks away, put pressure on him. Come back to the center again. A little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure. Looking for that. Another thing that I'm looking for too is that what his ear and his eye is doing. Okay, his eye is going to tell me a lot about and the angle of his body is going to tell me a lot about whether he's going to come in soon or not. If your horse is right on the rail and his nose is looking outside of the rail, outside of the round pen, he's probably not going to come in. But if your horse starts to soften a little bit, lower his head and blink a bit more, he might be looking and feeling like he wants to come in more. Ah, so that was a good change. So I reward the slightest try, smallest change. If he turns and faces me, I'm going to go right the way around, back out the other side. And I want the horse to start turning and facing me, and possibly even following me. You can see that Captain's starting to understand the game here. But if he starts to catch me, he stops running. Well, then my horse is following me, I'm just going to walk away. If he stops, then I can go to the route right around the outside and come back to where I get behind him. If I get behind him and he's giving he's not turning and facing me or he's and he's looking the other way and he's not and I can't see his eyes, then I'll put pressure on him again. I walk out, so here if I get, see he's doing good now because every time I walk out he's turning and facing me. Okay, if he gets to where he's following me and he's getting real close, then I might slow down gradually and just let him get comfortable with me in that position. And this is where you spend a lot of time just getting the horse to where he's really comfortable with following you and with you retreating away from him. And the more of that retreating you do and walking away from the horse, the more they feel curious and, um, and confident about following you. You know, so it's like reversing the roles a little bit. Usually it's a human trying to chase after the horse. In this case, you want your horse to chase, ends up chasing after you. So it's really a great objective to have and a great thing to achieve at the end of the day to go in your paddock and have your horse want to catch you and to follow you rather than you having to try and catch it. 
So then once the horse is caught up to me, I might just see if I can approach him a little bit. Let him smell my hand and I want him to be confident with not only you know catching me but also me approaching him and maybe touching him. And the best place to approach a horse to start with is at the base of the neck. So I might come in into the base of his neck here and just rub him at the base of the neck like this. Okay, first I let him smell my hand if, he, if the horse will do it. And then I come into the base of the neck and just rub him down at the base of the neck. Then I might even come in and rub him on the back here. Spend a lot of time just rubbing him. Don't be in a hurry to put the halter on. I might even get the halter up like this and just rub the horse with the halter. Put, rub it on their back. So they associate being caught with something that's comfortable and something that's enjoyable. And instead of putting the halter on, I might just walk away again and step back out and let him have his, have his space. So after a while, the horse starts realizing that, that he can, um, that catching can be a, a, an enjoyable experience and, and he starts feeling more confident about people approaching him and, and he feels more confident about approaching people. Okay, and the psychology is pivotal here. The psychology of you know, getting the horse to catch you and understanding that when you retreat and walk away, when they look at you, what that means to the horse. You know, it's a very um, non-predatorial act to retreat and walk away. You know, so when, when you walk away, the horse feels almost as if you're being submissive, not submissive, but being a little bit submissive and taking down that, taking away that aggression and that, that confrontation. And that's what gets the horse to start feeling safe, okay? The other factor that we're using here is the comfort factor. Okay, so we're, we're making the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult. So when he looks at us, we're making it easy, we're taking the pressure off, and we're making it uncomfortable when he doesn't look at us and when he trots around or walks away. So the horse starts to learn that the safest and most comfortable place for him to be is right to be looking at us or to be walking with us and behind us. So I hope these principles are of value to you. We're going to probably film another video, another training video with Captain, maybe session number two, and we'll show you how he's progressed and um, you get to see how quickly he might get that the next session. So thanks for tuning into the training video number one. We'll see you in training video number two.